Good morning, RH fans. It's Cass, and this is an intro to a new blog series that we'll be starting on RH very, very soon. Um, if you've been watching or reading our blog for some time, you know that I am in love with the idea of vintage travel. Now, vintage travel can be anything from dressing up in Victorian clothing and taking a steam train ride, or dressing in 20s clothing and going to hear a ragtime band play, or even the big deal that we've talked about before, planning a transatlantic crossing on the Queen Mary 2 and taking an entire wardrobe of clothing from the golden age of ocean travel. And a lot of people have said to me, oh, you're so lucky you can do this because you sew. Well, let me tell you a little widely known, not so secret secret. I don't really sew. I, I do sew. I sew sometimes. I don't like to sew, and I'm not really good at it. <laughs> but what I did do was grow up with a mom who sewed, and cousins who sewed, and aunties and uncles who sewed, and I learned something about, I mean, they sewed professionally, so I learned something about the industry and how it's not just really, really rich people who can have clothing made for them. It's not hard. It's not expensive. I mean, it's more expensive than going down to Kmart and buying a t-shirt for $5, but then again, what you have made by a professional seamstress is going to last you a lot longer than a t-shirt from Kmart. So it really is something that's worth the investment. And it's just not hard to do. You only think it's hard to do because you've never had to do it before. So one of the things that we're going to explore in this video blog is how to find a seamstress or a tailor, the difference between a seamstress and a tailor, and which one you actually need, um, how to pick your materials, how to communicate what you want to your seamstress or tailor. Because sometimes the biggest problem is that you think you're telling them this and they think they're hearing something completely different so what you need to do is communicate properly and another thing is what to expect you know you can't expect someone to uh, make miracles you you only can use the clay that you're given so basically i'm gonna go i'm gonna find a seamstress I'm going to talk to her about the thing that I want her to sew for me. I'm going to go through the whole process and I'm going to video it for you and share it with you week by week on this blog series. And at the end, I'm going to show you exactly what it cost, exactly how much time it took, and show you how beautiful the thing that my seamstress will make for me turned out and how really easy it is for you to do this. And you know, there's no reason why you, oh, I can't have pretty things because I can't sew. Well, there are people out there who sew, and they're in your local community, and it's good for your local economy that you use their services. And in the end, everyone's happy. You have beautiful vintage clothing that's made precisely in your size, precisely in the materials that you want. And somebody else has a nice little paycheck. So it's really a great idea. And I, it just occurred to me that maybe not everybody realizes how easy it is because you didn't grow up with seamstresses in your family who do this for other people. So I thought I'd give you that little piece of advice. And stick around. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun on this blog, especially as we're going to be meeting some really extraordinary people here on St. Croix uh, who work in the garment industry. And it's, it's going to be a laugh. So stick around and we'll have a really good time. Bye.